I want to show you how you can add a very simple filter search function to your website and just going to start on the front end this time. So I'll go to the views and the store and open up the index here. And just above the list of all of this, I want to add a form and I'm going to add ASP action for the index. I'll give this a class of call to put some margin and some padding just to two like that and then I'll add a div just write in here filter search then I'll add another div with some margin on the y-axis and in here I want to put an input of type text Oops. and the name of this one will be search string I want to put a placeholder that would say title or author and let's give it a class of form control sm and a call of 12. so that's the first one and then i'm going to add another one so i'm just going to do the same with this one give it a margin on the y-axis of one and this will be a two part, so input. And this one will be of type number. So, because I want to add a price uh, span in this one. So I'll name this one min price. And I want to add a step of one. So the type of number will make sure we can only get numbers and the step one will make sure we can only get integers. And set the class of form control uh, SM again and a call five to this one. And in between these two, I just want to have some space. So I'll, I'll add a NB is P and this is a space character and then I will add a long dash 8212 and another space so like that then I want another input uh, I can actually just copy this one and edit the ones I need to edit. So this one will be the max price instead. And we have the step of one and form control small and call five. Okay. So beneath here, I'm going to add another input. And this one will be of type submit. The value will be filter. So this will be our filter button. So we want to give it a class of BTN, BTN primary, and we'll do it BTN small. And below this one, I want to add a clear filter button. And this one will just be uh, a link to reload the page. So I want to put this at ASP action to index class of let's just copy this one but I want the, this one to be secondary and here I'll say clear and we can also float this one to the right so let me just go ahead and show you how this looks right now. So 
but this is what we have at the moment. And in here, maybe I want to put, I'll put some values in here so we just know what, what these two represent. And I also want to remove these arrows here. So let's just give this a placeholder of, let's say min dollar symbol and a same over here but this one to say max and hopefully people will get that and as for the little arrows i want to come to the www root go to the css and in my css file here i'm going to add uh, these two lines uh, with these two lines beneath so here I specify that the input of type number um, and these buttons, they won't be visible. And also the margin of zero so that, yeah, they disappear from the input window. So if I go and save that and run it again, now you can see that we have our placeholder and the arrows are gone. So now we just want to implement this in the controller as well. So close it down again, close this one down, go to our controller, our store controller. So into the index here, we need to pass three parameters, three strings. The first one is search string. Second one is the string and min price. And third one is string of max price. Then we want to get a variable books. And we can set this to be the context.books.select all books. So in the next step here, we want to do a check. That'll be if the string dot is null or empty of search string. If that is not empty, then we will select the books uh, where the book and let's see the book title dot contains search string or if the book dot author dot contains search string since we since we put the two together in the same and then we want to check the do the same check if the string dot is null or empty with the min price. And if that is not null, then we want to convert this to a int and use this to find the books where the price is less than or greater than uh, min. So we check that the string is not empty and if it is not empty then we want to convert this or parse it to an int and then we use that int to check the, the price, the first part of the, our price check and then we can just copy this and do the same down here. We do it with the max price. Oop. Max, max, and max. Let me just flip this one over like that. So since we are using this uh, number and we're using the step of one, we should only get an integer input. Even though it converts it to a string, we should only be we should be able to convert it to an integer again. Uh, since we shouldn't be getting anything else.
uh, we can check this in a bit, but this should uh, give you a message that if you try to input something else, it will say that that's not possible. And so after all that's done, we need to change this one to pass the books, which we've now filtered out. So if we go ahead and run this, we can see if it works. And I'll try by searching for ring. And we get the fellowship of the ring. If I clear it, and we come back to the original page. If I can try to search for a prize, that's let's see above a hundred. Then I get the prize that is a hundred and above. We can also try below a hundred. Then I get the, these books are below and if I want to get a book with the let's see here the price is between 90 and 100 and we can filter that and we get these three with the prices between 100 and 90 and if I try to input a non-integer value it will tell me that this is not a value uh, valid value and the closest ones are 12 and 13. Same goes here. Take a look at this. And I'm not able to even input uh, letters in here. You hear me typing, but nothing happens. And this one is just a text search. So like if you would write numbers, then nothing will show up because nothing matches. It won't throw an exception on you. But yeah. That's a very easy and simple way to make a text filter search for your uh, website. I hope you have some use for this and see you next time.